Hey, Anya here at Our Gabled Home, where I'd like to share tips for a simple, beautiful, healthy, sustainable living in a natural home. And today I want to show you how to make your own sourdough starter. Um, I think a lot of people get intimidated because I see recipes where it says this temperature and this many milligrams of that liquid and then let it stand for you know X number of days and it sounds really complicated and I have found that um, there's a much easier way and I want to show you that so um, I've actually had a lot of experience with sourdough I grew up on homemade sourdough bread and what happened was that when my mom married my dad my dad said to her now you're gonna get your new mother-in-law and learn how to bake sourdough bread because in my dad's family they've been making sourdough bread for generations my uncle says that they had rods underneath the ceiling where they would store the bread because they wouldn't um, have the convenience of baking every day or whenever they wanted they had to fire up an oven and then they would store the loaves underneath the ceiling to keep them from getting moldy and um, big families they would go through a lot of loaves in a short amount of time so anyways, all I can remember is eating this bread when I was a kid. And um, we made our own sourdough starter until, um, I don't know, when in the stores um, I would see ready-made sourdough starters. And um, so let me show you how easy that really is. Okay, so first I want to show you my sourdough starter that I have in the fridge. So this is what it looks like. Um, what I do is when I bake bread, I take about a golf ball size of um, dough and put it in this mason jar. And then I just add a whole bunch of flour to it and pound it down so it's all dry and the um, sourdough becomes really inactive and I just put a lid back on and put it back in the fridge and there it stays for I don't know maybe five weeks usually I bake bread more often than that but um, I have gone as long as five weeks and it was still good it smells a little bit stronger um, so that's the one that I have but I want to show you how to make your own in this glass jar I have just a little bit shy of a cup of buttermilk you can use plain buttermilk, you can use whole buttermilk, it doesn't matter. This is pretty foolproof. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this to thin it down just a little bit. And um, then I'll add my flour to it. And for this video, I'm going to use white flour. Um, you can use whole grain flour. You can use rye flour. I hear that actually rye is a little bit better with sourdough than wheat but that's what I have right now and that's what I'm going to show you and I don't know I mean I've never tried anything else but I heard that um, you should use a non-reactive container and spoon so that's why I use my glass mason jar you could probably use a um, like a cup um, like a ceramic cup and you just stir it up and um, what I like about this method is that you don't have to have super exact measurements you can just go by what it feels like so what i'm going for is something that's really thick and it's okay if it's lumpy it doesn't matter i'm using my wooden spoon to stir it up and um the other thing about sourdough is that you want to develop a relationship with your sourdough it depends on so many factors it depends on the temperature of the day, the humidity, what um, other bacteria and, um, and fungus you have in your air. And so it's, I think it's really difficult to say, um, you know, this method with, you know, one cup of buttermilk works and uh, everything else doesn't. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna steer this and, well, oh, there's a lot of flour coming up, but that's okay and set the spoon aside and then I'm going to use one of my beeswax wraps. There is a tutorial on my blog how to make these and we're just going to cover it up and let it sit. Every day I'll invite you back to 
look what the sourdough is looking like, what the starter is looking like, and then we'll, um, in part two of this tutorial, we're gonna make bread together, and then you get to see how you can actually make it from your own starter. So um, this is gonna be sitting on my windowsill. Okay, so here we are, not quite 24 hours later, uh, looking at our sourdough starter. And I said something yesterday about fungi, and that wasn't quite correct. It's actually the wild yeast that lives in all the flour that um, is present in the air around us that we're trying to capture and cultivate in the sourdough starter. So the sourdough starter has been sitting in my windowsill since yesterday, since we started it. And um, let's see what it's doing. So I see a little bit of bubbles on the top. I'm gonna show you in the camera how you can see the bubbles there I'm trying to not spill it smelling it it still smells a lot like buttermilk um, that's not what we're really going for and um, I also said yesterday something about having a relationship it's like having a feel for your sourdough you want to um, feel it you know, it actually sounds pretty good to me. It sounds like there's a lot of air in there. So we probably need to let this sit for another few days. My guess is three to four, maybe five days. It's been uh, rainy in Northern California. It's been cold. The kitchen doesn't have any heat in our house. So um, it's probably around maybe about 68 degrees or so. Um, that's definitely not very warm, but um, we'll give it a stir. Put the um, beeswax wrapped back on top, put it back in our windowsill, and then we'll come back tomorrow and see what's done. Are you ready to see what our sourdough is doing? So let's go check up on it. I like to do the smell test. Let me show you what it looks like. Holding it into the camera, here's, here's the camera. You can see it's a little bubbly there. It smells a little bit more sour than yesterday and I did this sound test. It sounds like there's a lot of air in it, which is good. It means that there's a lot going on in there, a little air bubbles, little bacteria all being active. So we'll give that another stir and come back tomorrow and continue seeing what it does. Hey, so here we are 24 hours later and we're checking up on our sourdough starter. So let's get it out of the windowsill. And the first thing I want to do is smell it. Smell it. It definitely smells a little bit more sour than yesterday, but not really quite yet where I want it. So I was talking to my mom on the phone this morning and she's been making sourdough bread for a long time. She's been making her own sourdough starter. And she reminded me that adding caraway seed to the starter really helps it get active. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have some caraway seeds here. The front says caraway in German. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit. Let me show you um, just a little, maybe not even quite a teaspoon. I'm gonna add that in there. So here's the caraway seed in the starter. I'm going to give that a, a stir, hoping that the caraway will activate all the goodness in my sourdough starter. And then I'll put it back onto my windowsill and we'll come back tomorrow and see if it has become a little bit more sour so that we can start breaking our bread. So let's check in with our sourdough. It's been another 24 hours and um, we'll see how it's doing. I'll get it out of the windowsill, take the beeswax wrap off. I'm gonna do my smell test. That's always a good indicator. I'm gonna show it to you what it looks like. I don't know if you can see the bubbles. I will stir it and I have to admit, I've never done this before, making sourdough with somebody watching. 
So um, it's not really where I want it to be, but it could be because I'm a little bit impatient or maybe I forgot how many days it really takes to get a full sour that will get you a good bread. So at this point, we're just gonna have a little faith. Um, put the beeswax wrap back on, put it back in our windowsill and come back tomorrow. So let's see what the sourdough starter is doing. Let's get it. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is what I've been waiting for. So yesterday I wasn't quite so sure what the sourdough is doing. Let me show you what it looks like today. Can you see all the bubbles there on tops and it almost looks a little foamy. See all the little bubbles? I gotta show this to you because this is really amazing. And the challenge is not to spill it into the camera. All right, so it is starting to smell like sourdough. And when I said you have to um, have a relationship with your sourdough, this is, oh, I love this. I'm so excited. <laughs> so anyway, so when you actually wait for a few days and nothing is happening and then you just trust that it's going to work and, and here we are. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for at least another day, maybe two more days because I want that um, pleasant sour smell to increase to make sure that I have enough active um, wild yeasts in there. And um, But this is already pretty exciting and um, yeah you get pretty invested in it but um, so and I haven't made a um, sourdough starter in a while so this is pretty cool I'm really happy and I hope you are with me too because then we can bake thank you and we'll come back tomorrow time to see what our sourdough starter is doing I have already put it out here and let's have a look. I'm gonna show it to you and you might remember that the challenge always is how to not spill it into the camera. I don't know if you can see that it's kind of foamy and bubbly on top. If I'm smelling it, I, it's a pleasant sour smell. It feels bubbly and airy to me. And so what I'm gonna do is, um, I think this is ready to bake. However, knowing my schedule tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, I know that I won't be having time to bake bread and let you know and let you watch. Um, so I'm gonna do something that I don't like to do. I'm gonna pour out part of my starter, put a lot of flour in it, and put it in the refrigerator. This is what I've done with my other sourdough starter that I'm going to show to you here. It looks a lot darker and that is because I've used whole wheat flour for it or um, rye flour because I grind my own grains. Ooh, and when I smell this, this is pretty strong. This is some starter that I've had for a long time. So maybe it's time to upgrade to the new one. I have recently read that bakers only use their starter for so long and then they create a new one. So maybe that's what I'm gonna do. So let me show you what I'm gonna do with this sourdough starter. Okay, one more time I'll show you the uh, my old sourdough starter that has a pretty intense smell, especially compared to the new one. And as I have said, I will pour out part of the new one. So I have about half, no more than half of what I had before left. And then I'm just gonna add some flour to it. I like that my starters, I have trained them to be very low maintenance. What that means is that usually when I bake, a bread that's what I mostly use my starter for I put a lot of flour in and I'll leave them in the refrigerator I don't feed my starters I don't do anything with them on a daily basis um, so now it's it's a little thicker you can already see that I'm just gonna add a little bit more and the fact that it's gonna sit in the 
refrigerator will slow the activity down of the sour. It's not going to kill it. And um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do this here and put it in the refrigerator. And like I said, this is, I haven't done this in a while, so um, we're doing this experiment together. This is really fun. Um, and then I have a little trick that I'm going to show you if you're not quite sure that your sourdough is doing what you want it to do. Um, so we'll put this in the refrigerator and then come back for baking. I hope you enjoyed watching my video on how to make your own sourdough starter. And um, it's really simple. It's very low maintenance. I like the fact that I'm not measuring much. I'm not uh, measuring temperatures. I'm not measuring ingredients. I'm not actually taking care of it in between bakings. I usually use it mostly for my sourdough bread, but I've also taken out a little bit and made um, a very white bread with it, and I've made waffles with it, and um, other little cakes with it. So there's a lot of things you can do with a sourdough. Um, and don't be afraid to experiment, and don't be afraid to not produce a result that you wanted at first. Um, what I find is a lot of people say, hey, I want to get your sourdough recipe, and then I share all the details with them. I maybe I even give them my starter, or part of my starter, and um, then they get discouraged and never try again. So um, sourdough is something that um, takes a little bit of experience, as I've said in the beginning. Um, in my family, I grew up basically eating the sourdough bread. It's been baked for generations. Um, the interesting fact is that when my grandmother was still alive, she was baking her bread. My mom was baking her bread and I was baking my bread. We all used the same um, recipe, if you will, even though there isn't an exact recipe. And all the breads were a little bit different. And we would all ooh and ah over each other's bread and say, oh my gosh, look at yours. And oh my gosh, look at how yours came out. And um, so there's a lot of variables. And I think that it's it's really worthwhile to figure it out. Don't be intimidated if you've always thought that sourdough is very complicated. I hope I was able to show you that it's not complicated at all. It doesn't have to be. This is one method that's been working for me and my family for a long time, so it's proven. I've shown you how you can create your starter from scratch. And um, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, if you have any experience with another method. And um, I hope that you will enjoy this and happy baking. If you enjoy watching videos like this, I upload content every week, please subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my blog at ourgabledhome.com for more content and more recipes and tips to create a simple, beautiful, healthy, and sustainable living. Thank you for being in my kitchen with me.